Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. And guess what? Today, one of the things we're starting is the library quilt from my Holiday Hoopla book. But we are also on the very last block of socialites. That's so exciting. It's so exciting. Uh, so the last block is by Lisa Bonjean. It is called the Energize Block. So you can download the uh, pattern. Uh, here is my Energize Block. It has the um, text print in the middle, stitched, stitched, stitched. I think that is great for the very last block. <laughs> okay, so we have, what is it, 24 blocks. You had 24 blocks that you did, and I have converted over to do, I have changed my, changed over to be doing the butterfly layout. So this is the layout that the Fat Quarter Shop did. And over in their Socialites Lounge, which is a Facebook group, just for the Socialites Sew Along. There was Socialites One, which was about two years ago, and then this one, which is now, of course, just wrapping up. And you can see all kinds of things in there, including, uh, the file with different people's um, variations of layouts. So if you're looking for maybe a different type of layout. Uh, so first of all, let me show you, remember I did a mock-up. So here is a mock-up of this quilt uh, with my, my fabrics that I'm using. So the original layout makes a much bigger quilt. My blocks are six inches. You know, so they gave the pattern in a three inch, a six inch, and a nine inch. When I did Socialites 1, I did the 9-inch, but these are the 6-inch. And even still, this layout is a nice big quilt, and it is gorgeous. If you go to the Socialites Lounge, there are some really beautiful ones showing up where people, you know, because you know the size of this, so they're six, three, six, or 9, you can make a half-square triangle or quarter-square triangle yourself. Uh, you have the, this layout here. Um, so uh, that, I, but I decided that I'd really rather use them as a smaller piece when I saw the the team over there, the, the quilters over there that got together and started messing around with the butterfly layout and ended up with this one. Uh, so I decided that I would do that, but I will be making, expanding mine just a little bit more from theirs. Uh, so this is their design. It has sashing between each of the blocks, a little tiny sashing so that they float and they're not touching each other. Uh, so that's a that's the difference between theirs and mine. Plus, I am building out my butterfly wings with more uh, half square triangles, and then I have the mock ups of the quarter square triangles down here. So that is something that I'm doing. Now, I did a couple of different variations on color. I went through, you know, moving, not color, but I'm moving like balance, balancing the color, moving the blocks around, and I've pretty much come to to this point. So let me put the last block up there so you can see it in its spot. And over on my website today, I will have a picture straight on of this so that you can see, uh, see it all together. And still <clears throat> mulling it over a little bit to be sure that I like the balance that I came up with. So that is, there we go, that is that quilt. And next week, um, I will be on travel, but I will show, I still have a video on next Friday, and it will have, um, you know, working, working through the sort of outer edge here. Not a lot of progress. I won't probably have gotten anything really sewn together, but I will do um, showing you the, the quarter squares. I'll get those done so we can see the real thing and the butterfly body. So I'll have those done for next Friday when I will be on travel. All right, so before we start in on the library quilt, I want to uh, tell you that it is gardening day. Oh, Yes, this is the day where the, we said there's lots of celebrations on every day and I decided that we had to celebrate gardening day. So if you have a quilt with gardening things on it, share that in the group today. It can be, you know, applique, it can be patchwork gardening, it can be gardening fabric, um, you know, like, but think about like gardening tools or vegetables, things like that. So I'm going to show you my farmer's market quilt. My this is my favorite quilt. This is a quilt I will probably keep forever. <laughs> I love this quilt. Uh, so this is a, my farmer's market quilt where I have eggplant and corn uh, and apples, of course, and cherries and peaches and uh, let's see, tomatoes and there's canning and strawberries. So and carrots, you know, carrots on a quilt. So this is my 
this is my quilt with my veg vegetables, my garden. So it doesn't have to be a vegetable garden, but a quilt with, with vegetables is a kind of fun because now there was like a bunch of those realistic vegetable fabrics. Do you remember those that have come out? And they probably still put them out, you know, every so often. And people have used them to do canning jar quilts, which are kind of fun. So, and so gardening day, share your gardening quilts. All right, let's, I'm going to get the other camera and we're going to look uh, at the, whoop, at the library quilt up close. But first, let me bring it forward. So the library quilt is in my holiday hoopla book. So you have to have the book in order to make this quilt. It is not anywhere else, the pattern. Let me see. Okay. So there we go. So the, the, um, I just want to give you a little backstory on this uh, quilt. I have wanted to do a library quilt for a really long time. And a lot of the library quilts are quite, quite large, you know, more like a lap quilt size. And I really wanted to do something that was a smaller wall hanging size. And I also wanted to do something that was really simple, you know, so it was a formula that I could put into a pattern in a book. Um, and there are loads of ways people modify and adjust, um, you know, library quilts like this so that they, you know, they make it unique. But we're first just going to, we're first just going to talk today and we're going to do one block that is totally focused on what the pattern is because the pattern has basically two blocks. Uh, so there's just variations of it and placement of it. Um, and well, not variations, but there's, you know, difference of like, this is the block and this is a spacer. This is the block. This is a block. So the same block is horizontal, 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 vertical, 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 vertical. So two blocks and then um, just repeated and moved around so that it looks kind of like your random bookshelf. So I quilted this one and I have got little bubbles in it and some other things. So let me just get the other camera and I'll sort of scan through this up close and talk about. My when I started this quilt, I got a group of fabric where maybe some of the pieces were from the same line, but not too many. Like this yellow and down here, that yellow was the same line. And I believe maybe that, no, I don't think so. I think that was a different line. But there was just a couple pieces. And then I used um, those to build other colors. So I've got a turquoise, a dark navy, light turquoise, light aqua, this um, coral, this mustardy yellow. And then, you know, sort of repeated that as I went with the same kind of colors. Now, I don't have this group of fabrics anymore to show you. You know, I can't get them out. But the thing is, I wanted to find some that were interesting. <clears throat> Here's text print. And this is millennial fabric. See the millennial fabric from the year 2000? Uh, that I saved. And here is some text print. First of all, it says handmade. And then I believe in hugs. Uh, so there's some socks and scissors on there. More text print with happiness. This one is repeated from down below. There was just a stripe that worked good in here. Same text print same text print. And then you've seen this one. I used that a couple of times, that coffee print. And I also had this wide stripe. It's black with kind of gold. It's a very, it's old. It's probably 10 years ago. Uh, and I kept it and I thought, you know, I needed something when we got to that frame. This is just talking through it. We'll talk again, but just to give you an overview. But I wanted it to have the shelving feel and then that's my fabric line for the border. So the border fabric. Um, so what you're going to do today is look at getting some collection of fabric. So I am going to be talking about that. And here are my bubbles. So I have a video on this on YouTube on the bubbles. And then the books are quilted just very simply. Straight lines. And then horizontal here on where the, um, you know, like the title of the book would be. And that's not on all of them. I left it off of some because I just thought it balanced it nicely to just have it on some of them. Okay, so that's a little deep dive into what is here.
So I hope looking at this more closely gives you the ability to just kind of think through what you want to do because it is not a big piece. Uh, so I like to have colors a little bit tighter, a little bit more cohesive for things that are not super big. And of course you have my book, so you have a picture, a really nice, nice picture in the book. Let me, let me grab it here. Whoop. Of course I didn't bring it over, did I? No, no, no. Why would I have done that? Uh, so, so here is the picture in the book. So you can really clearly see it in the book and you'll be able to look sort of at how I laid things out. And that's for this quilt. Um, I'm not sure how much of a second quilt I will do as we're going along because of so many things that I have working on, <laughs> but I am going to make a couple of the blocks and, you know, by the time I make a couple, I'll probably end up making another bookshelf. This is, we'll also talk a little bit about um, making it bigger. So just from that standpoint, the easiest thing to make this a bigger quilt is to do more books across and more shelves. You know, that is the simplest way to make a bigger quilt out of this. Um, you could do four shelves, even five shelves, and then make it, you know, half as much again, or even twice as long, you know, depending on how big you would really want to work on this. All right, so what we're gonna do is go to the other side and take a look at uh, the actual block, well, you know, the blocks, the two blocks, and how we'll approach maybe picking some fabric. And I'm gonna look at some of mine and what I might wanna play with to do a second one, uh, or at least part of a second one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe a table runner um, to go with it. Uh, but I want to look at maybe some different colors. I really want to look at something different than what I did here because I've already done that. <laughs> Let's talk about fabric a little bit and what, um, what you might want to do, what you might think about doing, because today to kick off the library quilt, uh, the fabric is key. Now you could make it very scrappy and then at the end find a magnificent sort of border to frame it out. And I think that also works really well. But you know me, I really like to work with collections. I have done it since I started quilting and I just love doing that and then adding in some things to it. It just is fun for me to work like that. So, but first let's take a look. So, the book, the quilt as is, is 42 by 50. So it is um, like maybe a child size, which would be super cute because you could do all children's prints. Uh, it's definitely a wall hanging size if you wanted to gift this to somebody to hang like as a piece of art. Uh, but like I said, if you wanted to make it bigger, you could make a longer rose and then you could make more rows. And that's definitely super easy considering there are just um, two blocks and you're just kind of rotating them around. Okay, so in order to think about fabric, I thought you can start with some, you could start with a collection, something like here's one that this was the one that was sent to me as a present and it is called the Riviera Collection. I just thought it was right on top and I thought, oh, that's a really, really, really pretty. Um, and it has like some fun prints. You know, that's the thing is like, I think these library quilts should have some fun prints, you know, things that are fun and whimsical, uh, you know, for book edges. Like here's like nautical, you know, so like here was the umbrellas, whoops, there, see the umbrellas. So this would be like kind of a really fun beachy, you could make a beachy books, beach, beach reads, right? Think about that. What do you want to, um, project into this quilt? Like to me, you could, this could be beach reads. It would be so fun. And then maybe find some, uh, edges of salvages that maybe had like a beach theme. I don't know. Like it might, might be hard to find, but, <laughs> but you could find fabrics that have a nautical or beach vibe to them. Or you can just go through your stash and you can find different fabrics that maybe have something unique. Like here, I love the XOXO. So that definitely could be cut out for the spine of the book, like a cross for like the title. Um, love birds, I don't think any of them are that wide, but you could just do love or just birds, uh, you know, something like that. This is a one that I have that's not real words, but it's, um, I don't think it is anyways. No, no, it is. There it says Christmas, uh, but it's very um, hard to read them, but it gives you that 
feel of the text print. Okay, so the other thing I did was went through and said, well, what would I want to sew with right now? And I bought this line a while ago, a while ago called Happiness Blooms by my friend Deb Strain. And it is so pretty. She is such a great artist. Uh, and I thought, well, let's just take a look at this. You can still get this layer cake because the layer cake will be perfect to work with. Uh, and it gives me all the variety. Why is this not coming off? Okay. All right. I thought I was just slip this off here easily so that we could talk about it. But no, nothing's ever easy when you're filming. So there we go. <laughs> we broke into it. Okay. Shove that over there. So if, I also bought two other pieces. Now, at the Fat Coder Shop, this one's not available anymore, but the ginghams are, and a few of the other prints are still available, and the layer cakes are still available. They have a nice selection of those, and a number of those. So these, this would, be, I think, be gorgeous um, for the book spines. And then maybe going through my fabric and finding other pieces in these same colors. I think it just is a neat uh, colorway. The taupe, a little bit of great taupey gray, uh, and then these flowers with the green and the white roses. There's like, and then here it is in like a um, turquoise or teal, more like a teal. And I don't know, I just thought, look, look, I had a pretty fussy cut the spine of the book with that. And then of course those pretty roses. It would just give a whole different feel to the bookshelf. <laughs> there's regular green and then there's some text print. Let me get you that. Yeah, black here, I forgot to show you the black. So there's black uh, and then the text print and then the black gingham and the, see, I think these would all look really good. And then what I thought would be to put it on my gray from Promise Me, from my fabric line Pom Promise Me. Use that as the, the background of the bookshelf. And then, I don't know, I might use this gingham then for the, for the shelf line. And then because I had bought that, put it on the outside. You know, just something totally, totally different. I don't know. I'm going to do one block though and show it to you. I will do one block out of this and show it to you. Uh, the other is to get out your salvages and look at those. And they, if you've already been cutting them, so th most of these were sent to me. And so they're various sizes, which none of which will probably be the right size for the edge, but I can add to it, you know. And plus, you know, I would just sort of, I would just sew, if I can, sew the bottom edge. Otherwise, the bottom edge has to be top stitched because sometimes the printing is too far down. This one, I could actually sew it. I could sew this to either top stitch it down onto another piece of fabric, you know, for the edge, or, um, you know, pa make patchwork and make it wide enough. But look at the clothing line on there. I think that's so cute. That would be cute, super cute. But there's all kinds of other fun things you could, you could find uh, in your, on your selvages. So let me see, like even just the dots would be cool. But you can see here, the dots are too far down. You would have to top stitch that. So all I'm going to do is just real quick make one block. <laughs> I'll make one block and just show it to you. Let me just note that if you are going to use a layer cake, there is a one strip that needs more than 10 inches for the verticals and there's a strip that needs more than 10 inches when you're doing the horizontal. So if you're doing a layer cake, then go ahead and be sure you buy a couple extra pieces of fabric or go into what you own and add something. Now, this particular fabric line also comes in a fat eighth bundle, which would be big enough. Uh, you wouldn't have that problem. And it also has a half yard bundle if you really love it and you wanna make something even more with it, you can pick that up. But the layer cake, just be aware that two of the strips will need longer pieces. So if you don't want to piece the fabric, which is of course an option, but if you don't wanna piece it, then just um, purchase another couple or add in from your own. And I found this, I don't know, it may not work here because it's very, it's got a white background, but that's a cute text print. I just found that when I was looking around. Here it is in this gorgeous fabric line, Happiness Blooms. Isn't that pretty? 
this is so pretty. So let me just show you where it would go. So this is kind of how, how it is for one block. Yeah, and I like that dark gray with it. Now, like I, like I mentioned, uh, layer cakes, there are the long, longest ones, and you'll have to either piece from a layer cake or just add from your stash or something, or buy a couple extra pieces. This particular line, you could buy the Fat Eighth bundle, and then you'll have plenty. So that would be, you know, a way to go. All right, so we're kicking off our library quilt. Do a test block, if you want to call it this, to just look at your fabric and see what you think about it. Get your fabric out. Share it in our community, Quilt Along with Pat Sloan, at Facebook so we can see what your fabric selections are for your library quilt, what your theme or your concept might be. And do your last, whoops. <laughs> Grabbing a whole bunch of papers. I don't need those. So do your last socialites block today. Yes. Okay, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.